because it explains so much more than the current view of ADHD explains. As I will show you, ADHD children are 11 times more likely to develop oppositional defiant disorder within two years of the onset of their ADHD. Why? What do those disorders have to do with each other? Now they're treated as simply comorbidity. Oh well, they go together, but we're not sure. But if you put emotion back into ADHD, you see the connection right into ODD, because everybody with ADHD is automatically subclinically ODD at the get-go. It's only going to take one more symptom to cross the diagnostic threshold. In other words, ADHD causes ODD. That is an important thing to understand because the ODD, while it does have some social influences over it, half of ODD is the inability to manage frustration, impatience, and anger. And that will set you up for the second component of ODD, which is interaction conflict, defiance, arguing. But the first four symptoms of the eight in ODD are mood, anger, temper, hostility, easily annoyed, irritability. And that is part of ADHD. So we need DSM-5 and we need families to both understand that emotion goes with this disorder. It is not a separate comorbidity in some cases. And now we know why when we treat ADHD, particularly with the medications that we use, we get nearly as much reduction in ODD as we get in ADHD. And when we don't, it is because of the social conflict component, which is learned. And we will have to unlearn that little piece. But the mood component is the ADHD component. Now, by returning emotion into ADHD, it also helps families to understand some of the other life course risks. 50 to 70 percent of ADHD children are utterly rejected by close friendships by second grade. It is, in fact, one of the more devastating consequences of this disorder, is this inability to make and keep close, sustained friendships with other children. And it is heartbreaking for parents to see this happening, that their child is not as liked as other children, that the sleepovers, the going to the movies, and the other social events in which other children celebrate their peer relationships are shut off for this child. Why is it there? The single best predictor of peer rejection is that symptom, the emotional impulsiveness. Friends forgive you your distractibility, your forgetfulness, your working memory problems, and even your restlessness. They will not forgive your anger, your hostility, the quickness with which you emote to other people, because it is offensive. It is socially costly. So now we can begin to understand the numerous social problems that ADHD children are prone to, because it arises from this aspect of the inhibitory deficit. There are other things that it explains. I could do a whole hour and a half, as I did a month ago in Toronto, on the importance of emotion in ADHD. I won't go there. But suffice to say that it explains the road rage during driving, the job dismissals, which are not the result of inattentiveness, but of being too quick to anger, too quick to express raw emotion in the workplace of which employers are not tolerant, especially if it occurs with a customer. And it also explains to us the marital difficulties and the parenting difficulties these children may be prone to because the single best predictor of marital problems in the adult with ADHD is not distractibility. It is emotion. So we can begin to paint a better picture of understanding ADHD and its life course risks by understanding the nature of the inhibitory problem and that it includes emotion as part of it. And that's just slide one. I've got 85 slides. <laughs> Do you see why I'm concerned? 